Pregame.com. Saturday, NFL playoff action. We've got the Detroit Lions at the New Orleans Saints. I'm Marco D'Angelo. I'm joined by Stephen Nover. Stephen, this is a rematch from an earlier game uh, this season. Detroit went into New Orleans on a Sunday night, and um, they got rolled by 14 like so many teams have been doing, going to the uh, Superdome. What, uh, what are your thoughts on this game? Hard to go against New Orleans here, Mar uh, Marco. New Orleans, perfect at home, both straight up and against the spread. As you mentioned, they beat Detroit by 14. Detroit didn't play very well that game. Detroit lost their cool in that game, had like 100 yards and penalties. Uh, and that was without Sue in the lineup, because if you remember, that's <laughs> yeah, the game he was yeah, serving his suspension. Yeah, a few really costly uh. personal fouls. Uh, I was... Uh, trying to see if I could get there with Detroit, because obviously this is a lot of points mm -hmm. to, to lay against a real quality offense. I can't get there. Maybe if, maybe if the line gets to 14, but still, it's still in the enough range where I got to, I, you can't fade New Orleans at, at home the way they're playing, I'm clicking on all cylinders, balanced the way they are, averaging, I believe, 41 points at home. And Detroit, their defense, especially their secondary, has, has been... So bad, 45 points and six touchdowns to a Green Bay Junior Varsity team, <laughs> starting Matt Flynn, their backup quarterback. I mean, if you want to make the case for Detroit, I, I'm all ears, Marco, but, but good luck. Yeah, well, it, it definitely it's hard. I think that it's Detroit had something to play for last week. We all know that. Um, you know, and actually when we did the video um, last week on that game, one of the things I pointed out to you, Detroit was a, a young ball club. And we had seen it earlier this year with uh, teams like Houston when they clinched uh, their playoff spot, San Francisco when they clinched it. That next week, even though they still had something to play for, trying to nail down a better seed, the teams did not play well the week after they got into the playoffs when they hadn't been there before or in quite some time. So I'm really throwing away last week's game on Detroit. My thing is, if you look at the three previous weeks to that game, they played very well. I mean, granted, it was Minnesota, Oakland, and San Diego, but they took care of business like they were supposed to and won their way into the playoffs. My point is, I know New Orleans looks super right now, and I'm not going to argue it. In fact, I had a guy on the way uh, to the office that's in a pool when we were doing these videos. He texted me. He says, who's your two teams? You know, if you had to put two teams to reach the Super Bowl, who's your choices right now? And I told him for his pool, New Orleans and Baltimore is, is what I said. Uh, they are the logical choice. They're playing the best ball right now. Yes, even better than Green Bay right now, but they're going to have to go to Green Bay, you know, to get there. Are they playing three points better football than they were a month ago when they played D Detroit? I mean, Detroit was without Sue. That's going to make a, a difference in the pass rush. Um, Detroit's playing... They didn't play well in that game, and they had all those penalties that you talked about, but they still only lost by 14. Other teams have been losing by, you know, three touchdowns or more going into the Saints. So I can make a little bit of a case for Detroit, where I think this line should have been 10. I don't think they should have got it over the double digits, but, uh, you know, it's hard to take Detroit, that's for sure. Well, a key... Uh injury with Detroit is they didn't have Lewis Delmas for, for most of the game last week against the Packers. He'd been out and their secondary has really suffered without him. He's their safety. He's their top uh, defensive back by far. And they also have some cornerback injuries. They're starting to hopefully get these guys back. So if they're up to speed health-wise in the secondary, that, that could make a difference. Although I don't think enough of a difference to take me off the Saints mm -hmm. right now because uh, just Drew B Brees, you can argue he's had the finest year ever for a quarterback. I mean, he has thoroughly put him in the discussion, himself in the discussion with Aaron Rodgers for M MVP. Oh, matters. absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and it's not just uh, the difference with New Orleans and Detroit. Yes, Detroit has a great passing attack, too. I, I, I like Matthew Stafford a lot. I love Calvin Johnson. I think he, Calvin Johnson is the best wide receiver in the NFL. I would argue that. But the Saints still have more receiving weapons. They have the most dangerous tight end in the NFC yeah. in Jimmy Graham. And they have a far better running attack than Detroit. Detroit basically has no running attack. Right. And to their credit, they realize this. Scott Linehan, their offensive coordinator, has kind of redesigned the offense. They're 
probably passing on every play now and safe passes though. And I just don't think they can keep up up, up the points with, with, with uh, New Orleans. And the odds makers know it. Look at this, and I know you want to touch on this. Look at this crazy total yeah. that we have. It, it's, right now it's at 59. And I would not be surprised that come game day, by the time we actually hit Saturday, that it hits 60. I can tell you that once it, once it does peak, the wise guys are going to come in and buy they're they're going to buy the under because it's just it's it's one of those old adages you just don't play certain totals at certain numbers but this is a team and this is an offense and what you said about Detroit is true if they abandon the running game and they and they try to say the only way we have a shot is to try to keep up to them this could be a game that gets into the 80s I think you have to throw out these old adages that have worked before in the NFL because this year is different. This year, as we know, is the year of the quarterback. There's mm -hmm. been rule changes implemented. You can't touch quarterbacks. You can't do anything. And it, it throws out these adages. I don't think you should just set these guidelines. Well, if it gets to 60, i got to go under or I can't play the mm -hmm. over. Sure you can. Yeah, 10 and a half, 11 points. I, I think it's getting to 11 and a half. I think the line's going to go up when the public gets involved. They're not going to play Detroit. So what with New Orleans? These guys can score on every possession. It doesn't matter, 11 and a half, 14. Yes, if you start getting to 14, that matters. But meanwhile, these other key numbers, 10 and 11, doesn't matter as much as it used to matter because of the offense they're playing against with New Orleans. What about backdoor? You know, well, I mean, it's it, always live with such a great you know, offense with, uh, with the Lions. But uh, you know, it's also a backdoor the other way where it can kill a teaser where on a pick six or something where they're desperately trying to go right. down the field forcing things. And you know what New Orleans is going to do on defense. They cannot line up and play a base defense and hold anybody. They're going to be blitzing. They're going to be blitzing like crazy. We know this going in, so that can have some uh, positive effects. It right. can have some negative effects. I, it's that, not going to have neutral effects. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Uh, when, you, when you blitz, one of two things yes. are going to happen. You're, you're going to get the quarterback or he's going to make a big play on you. And, you know, that's, that's the big key. One thing that you do have going for you is the Saints last year, one of the most embarrassing playoff losses yeah. that I can remember in recent memory because it, there was such a, I mean, that's all you heard about going into that final week of the regular season. What a crime it is, whoever was going to win that game between Seattle and St. Louis to go to the playoffs. And if it was you know Seattle with the you know you know the record mm -hmm. making the playoffs, mm -hmm. you know they, they were the laughing stock of the NFL, and yeah. they came out and beat the New Orleans Saints, you know, in the playoff game. And I don't think the Saints have forgotten that. They have not. They've been on a mission since then. And no, that is a good point, Marco. It's a huge motivating factor. And uh, yeah, they made sure that they're they're at home and, and they're gonna they're gonna be extremely motivated. Yeah, that's really spurred them. Yeah. All right, your official projection here. I'm gonna call it uh, huge. I'll call it New Orleans 41, Detroit 21. Yeah, that would actually take it over that big number yep. too. Well, I'm neutral right now. I can't disagree with you. And, well, Marco, and excuse me, just to interrupt you for just for one second. Okay. I mean, we're uh, just getting back on our discussion where you're talking about the total, oh, 59, mm -hmm. if it goes over 60. Well, New Orleans is averaging 41 points at home. So I'll call it, I'll put it on 41. I mean, that's their average. They're not going against a great defense, a very yeah. weak secondary. Is it too much to ask Detroit to get three touchdowns, which would no. be 21? That puts it on 62. So that's yeah. what I mean. Is 59 really that enormous of an amount, a mountain what you can't climb? Well, you know, I agree with you. In, you know, it was like uh, in a couple of the bowl games, uh, the radio shows I did with the Oklahoma State-Stanford game and the Wisconsin-Oregon game. I said, you, some of these games, you just can't put a number high enough on, on these games because these offenses are just... Too advanced, and, and it is the year of the quarterback, and here's two of the, you know, you've got a veteran that's having probably the best year of his career, uh, you know, he's having a run right now like Aaron Rodgers had last year, and we saw what that did for, you know, it carried the Packers mm -hmm. to a Super Bowl title. And we got, you know, for Detroit, you got an, a young up-and-coming quarterback. Well, he's a top 10 you already, know. Stafford. Yeah, yeah so, he's great. Yeah, you know, I, I can't, you know, I can't disagree. And I know if we had RJ here, he'd be talking uh, correlated parlay. He'd be, he'd be saying New Orleans and over. But I, I think you could look at Detroit and over, too, because I think if they get back door, 
it's going to be a situation where, you know, it's a big number and they yeah. sneak in. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there you have it. Stevens' official free pick is to take the New Orleans Saints. He's got them winning by 20. Uh, I'm neutral on the game right now. Uh, carry on the conversation right up through game day on Saturday and Sunday with these playoff games. Go to pregamevideos.com and you can talk about all of the games. We'll post our show notes. You can ask us questions. We'll carry on the conversation in there. You just got to come in and ask the questions. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more playoff action.